Good evening and welcome. Um, tonight we are here to honor our retirees for their many years of dedicated service to our students, families, and the Peabody community. Please help me congratulate and honor Lynn Klukas. If you could please stand and come gather around this table here. <laughs> Gwendolyn Haskell. Dorothea Kaczynski, Virginia LaBelle, Susan Legiro, James Lyons, Penny Nelson, Patricia McGovern, Ralph Rucco, Raymond Smoyer, Mary Ann Stone, and Cynthia Trainer. Hopefully, I got everybody tonight. <laughs> so, so I have a little, we have a little present for you, and I don't know if everybody knows, but our retirees um, have the opportunity to choose one of their favorite books to put in their library of choice, which is the school usually that they're, um, they're at. Um, so here is the display of some of the books that have been chosen, so thank you. Those will go into those libraries of choice. But I do have a little poem for you. It takes a special person to teach a child in class. I'll probably get, I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> to just keep his attention or her attention in the world that moves so fast. To show a child that he or she is unique with talents deep inside to help to build his or her confidence so he or she can beam with pride. To show a little patience for a child who lost his or her way to a child who feels abandoned who has seen better days, to inspire and to motivate so a child can learn and grow, to go into this big wild world that has its highs and lows. You are a special person. You always give your best. And for every child who has your class or have been in their, your school, their life is truly blessed. Thank you for your many, many years of dedication. And we would like to uh, honor you with um, a little gift. So I'm done with the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> two-minute recess.
lot of fun. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to call the regular school committee meeting back to order. And we will start with a moment of silence, if everyone could please stand. Thank you. And um, we do have some students here from the McCarthy School who are going to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Marte. Thank you, Mr. Arnotis. Medj Neja is a fifth grade student at the McCarthy School. He's a member of the student, uh, student government. He likes to play soccer, and his favorite subject is math. He is a member of the, the United Soccer Team. Medj says that he wants to be a scientist when he grows up. And Mr. Smoyer, we have the honor of having Mr. Smoyer, his principal, say the Pledge of Allegiance with him tonight. Please join us up front here. We are going to go out of order and jump to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Arnotis. Tonight, I am recommending a special education director to the school committee. If I could please have Carla Gioda join us up here. Good evening, Carla. Thank you. Carla has over 20 years of experience in education. Currently, um, she sits as a special ed director in Adams Cheshire Regional School District. Prior to Ar Adams Cheshire, Carla was the inter interim special ed education director in Lemonster. Carla was an in um, 
intern on loan in the Connecticut Attorney General's Office in Diversity and Equity. And Carla is a licensed special education administrator and completed her Juris Doctor at UConn while working as a full-time administrator. So Carla, welcome. And this is our school committee and we're very, um, we're honored to have the school committee that we have here in PBD that are here um, because it's every student every day and they support that motto that um, in PBD, kids definitely do come first. So, so, this, so this is Carla Chioda. Good evening. Mr. Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Onotis. Um, nice seeing you again. Nice to see you again. I had the privilege of serving on the search committee and I had an opportunity to um, read through some of your credentials as well as uh, participate in at least the initial interview that you uh, participated in as well. Um, I can report that the search committee uh, did move Ms. Chioda uh, forward as well as one other candidate to um, Superintendent Murtag and as a result of the second round of interviews we now have one candidate before us. Correct. Um, I uh, have, as I said, gone through the process of interviewing you so I don't plan on doing that tonight. I just wanted it known that I did participate in that, and I can say that uh, if um, this uh, recommendation by the superintendent moves forward, I'd ask that you, um, among other things, focus on, um, I've been asking for the, for the special education department to digitize for a long time. Uh, it's a paper intensive um, part of our school district. It's paper intensive uh, for a good reason. There should be paper trail for, um, children and the services that they receive to ensure compliance and uh, with the laws as well as um, other things but uh, we have a tremendous amount of paper and uh, we're in 2019 it's time that we start at least moving forward digitizing this department in particular because of the amount of paper that we go through in that department so uh, should um, we have a recommendation to hire you, hire you uh, maybe we'll talk about that in the future Nice to see you tonight. Thank you. Nice to see you as well. Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome. Welcome to Peabody. Thank you. Um, thank you for applying. I wanted to tell you it was, um, it was very, uh, very heartening to read your resume and learn a bit about you. And I was really, really impressed that um, one of the statements you have in there was that you had looked for opportunities to utilize your law degree with the uh, administration of a special education department, which I thought was a really great blending of, of your background and your experience. Could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? I mean, you're coming from the Berkshires out to this side of the state, mm -hmm. um, which are really you know, almost two different worlds. They can be, absolutely. So mm -hmm. the, um, coming from the Berkshires, I've actually only been in the Berkshires for the past year. Prior to that, most of my career I spent in central Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, my desire to blend my law degree and my special education services, I really went to law school so that I could become a better mediator and a better negotiator at the table so that I could assist um, parents and staff members within the school district to be able to come to consensus and uh, identify the best services for students. So that's really what drives me. Um, as far as a little bit more about myself, again, Central Mass for, for most of my life. I uh, grew up in Worcester, went out a little bit west to the uh, Brookfields, um, and then had some opportunities out in Lemonster and in the Berkshires that um, called to me. Well, that's great. Well, I do have to apologize because, you know, anything west of 495 is another world. Another world. <laughs> Central Mass, Berkshire. Anything west of 495? <laughs> There's a lot west of it. It really is. It's it, beautiful. There's, a, there's yeah. a lot of open country west of 495 and a lot less traffic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait till you, wait till you sit in our traffic. Yeah. <laughs> traffic guards weren't with me tonight. Oh, <laughs> well, we can, we can show you shortcuts from school to school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, welcome, and, and uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. Mr. Olympio. Yes. How you doing? Thank you for coming, and uh, nice to see you again. I was also on that committee, and uh, I just want to let people know that I've already interviewed you, and I uh, will be following the recommendation of the superintendent. Thank you. So, 
I'd like to make a motion to follow the recommendation of the superintendent. All right. Motion by Mr. Olympio. We have a second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Hockman. Anything on the motion? Right. Roll call. If oh, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah, Hockman. If I can just amend that yeah. a little more. Okay. So it's a, to follow the recommendation of the superintendent to enter into negotiations um, with the chair of this committee, with the candidate for special education director. Oh, se second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call, please. Yeah. Love this group. Yes. 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 Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> that was painless, wasn't it? <laughs> if, 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 we were, if we were being contacted. Yes. Thank All you right. so Thank much. You. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. you. We're going to continue our process. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, our next presentation this evening is with four kids only, so if I can um, invite uh, Deborah and Brianna Nealon up to the front. And Deb and Brianna are just going to give us a little overview of this school year, uh, before the bell and af the after school program, and um, a little information about the West as we did a little survey because there was interest there. Um, so they're going to make a, a, a short presentation, so thank you. Thank you so much. And as you can see, Four Kids Only has a new logo. Yes. <laughs> it's the, uh, the journey of the, um, the heart. Um, and our hashtag is now, what's your heart print? So we try to, um, it's part of our SEL um, work with students. So hi, I'm, I'm Debbie Neal Keegan. I'm the executive director of FKO, and with me is Brianna Flannery, who is my deputy director, and also our director of grants management. So we just wanted to give you a summary of our past year here. Um, first, I'd like to um, say thank you very much to our superintendent, because it's been a pleasure working with you this year. Um, the superintendent has, ha has uh, greeted us with open arms and has been very kind in her approach in terms of our partnership and collaboration. She meets with my team quarterly, and um, we've been able to do a lot of troubleshooting at those meetings that have been very helpful in uh, making sure that all children are uh, put first here in the city. So um, F our, um, I've given you two sheets of paper here, and the first um, details our enrollment summary for the year in the six elementary schools that we um, presently um, are housed. Um, our total enrollment this year was 434 students, kindergarten through grade five. Um, of that, um, 171 students pay privately, which is $24 a day. Uh, most of those students do not come five days a week, however. Um, most of them are part-time at that rate. Um, Ten of our students are funded through our internal Helping Families uh, Scholarship Fund. And then we have 107 students that are funded through the State Department of Early Education and Care income eligible vouchers or slot contract that we have. Um, 30 of the students that attend have open cases here in the city with DCF. And then we have 116 students who are funded through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education uh, 21st Century Community Learning Center grant which we have three grants right now at the Carroll School, the Center, and the Welch School. And on the back of the um, sheet I gave you um, talks about our before school program. And for those of you who have been with us from the beginning, you will see that we have grown uh, tremendously um, in that program and that we presently serve 191 students. Um, 133 of those students pay privately. Um, 60 students come to before school only, and then 131 students come both before school and after school. And 58 of those students are funded through the EEC income eligible uh, voucher and slot program. So the other sheet that I gave you really talks about each individual funding stream that we have. So the various contracts, in case you want further information in detail in terms of how those funding contracts work, who can access those dollars. For example, the income eligible contract that we have is for low income working families here in Peabody. Um, there is a year round requirement for those families that they come all year round with us. 
during the after school hours, um, school vacation weeks, and in the summertime. So you can read those and, or ask questions if you want. Oh yeah, and about the West School, Brianna, we've been doing some exploratory work to open at the West School a before and after school program. Presently, um, we went to the kindergarten registration um, uh, night and we also plan to go to the upcoming family event that's coming. Is it a family night? Field day, field day. Mm -hmm. So we presently have eight families that have committed to the before school program at the West. Um, and at the after school. So it's kind of a combination of before and after school. And of those eight families, they <coughs> are not all committed. Actually, none of them really are committed for five days a week. So it's um, right now we're still um, piloting out that program to see if it's feasible. Um, we'd like to have 20 students registered in order to make this a, um, a viable program. So that's where we are right now. We're working very closely with the principal on that. Do you want to say anything else about that? No, and just so, it, like Debbie mentioned, uh, last week we attended the kindergarten uh, welcome event, and we'll be at field day this Friday. We have set a deadline with Principal Kohler for Friday for families to pre-register. It's a one-page pre-registration with a committed registration fee to show the, that they're serious about the program. So we hope that by the end of this week, um, there'll be a lot more of those pre-registrations so that we can move forward. Uh, we need to get the program licensed through the Department of Early Education and Care, begin our own search, com um, search process, process for a site director, so, and let families know. So I asked, um them, uh, I asked for kids only to, we did a survey out to the families because we were getting emails about interest. Mm -hmm. So we got the surveys, but now what we're doing is reaching out for commitment, and that's the process that they're in now. We thought field day where we see lots and lots of families volunteering and being a part of that fun day, and also we had a lot of interest at, at the, um, the registration um, in February and March with Mrs. Murphy. Um, they were asking. So we got their emails and sent them the survey. And so that's why um, four kids only came to the visitation day. So we thought just getting the word out there, because we do currently um, bus a few students to the McCarthy from the West. But if we have interest, that would be something that we're looking into. So I just wanted to get, gather some data for the school committee to see if that's in the families of the West School to see if there's high interest. Mr. Hawk. Thank you. Uh, through you, um, the partnership between For Kids Only and PBD Public Schools has been seamless and very, very positive in my opinion. Uh, we don't, I don't get any, uh, I haven't heard any negative feedback with regard to For Kids Only. Um, I think you do a wonderful job. You've lived up to your obligation and your commitment to PBD Public Schools. We piloted a program for before schools a few years ago um, to see if there was interest. We learned that there is interest. You committed to it even before it was, I think, financially practical for you, and I thank you for that. Um, you've also, since the beginning of your um, service to the Peabody Public School students, have received three 21st century competitive grants, which would have um, perhaps permitted you to renegotiate um, your financial obligation to the school district, and you didn't do that. You stood by the contract that we uh, entered into that was negotiated and we entered into, and you lived up to paying for um, the space that you utilize at all of the elementary schools, and I thank you for that. I do want to also say that um, Four Kids Only has been uh, a partner with the No Child Goes Hungry program and will continue to be a partner. And we've had some conversations um, and some um, with, with various stakeholders with regard to continuing the program through the, through the summers and Four Kids Only has um, agreed to continue to talk to see if their staff can be um, people who are able to service the students who come in for backpacks over the summer at the buildings in which they have staff. So I want to thank you for that also. Mr. Amico. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Debbie and Brianna. Thank you so much for what you do with FKO. Um, not only do you do it in uh, Peabody, you do it in Revere. Everett, Winthrop, Salem, did I miss someone? Chelsea. 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 And um, again, your great work here in Peabody, but what people need to know is you're getting kids at the most vulnerable time before school, 
or after school when they've either you know, just woken up and they're getting to school and their parents are off to work or um, after school when a lot of their friends are, are heading home and, and they're heading for another two or three hours and you guys do such a great job at keeping those kids engaged and, um, and making it fun for them and, uh, and actually we had a great experience when my two children uh, went to FKO over at the center school. So I just want to thank you for all you do. Appreciate it. Ms. Carpenter. Thank you. Welcome, Brianna and Deb. It's nice to see you again. I'm glad things are going well, especially for the before school. That's an important one. Um, they're all important, but this was something that you stuck your neck out for, and I appreciate that. Um, very detailed. I appreciate all of the uh, descriptions that you have here. Can you just uh, talk to me a little bit about what the summer programs will be and uh, what you're doing for the summer for us this yes. year? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, so our program uh, is year-round. So the For Kids Only Optical program only closes 16 days a year. So thank you for keeping the buildings open for the students um, to continue. Our summer program begins uh, the Monday after school gets out, so June 24th, and continues through the end of the summer right up before Labor Day. Uh, we will be closed two days for professional development before school. We'll be running our programs at the Welch School and the Carroll School, uh, and students from across the district have, are welcome to attend. Currently, we have a little bit over 100 students enrolled at each summer program, um, and we are asking families to please commit by the end of this week so that we can give commitments to our staff, um, book all of our field trips and make sure that all of our curriculum plans are, are in place. So we're looking at, I would, um, about, I would say 250 students will be enrolled in total uh, throughout the summer months. Um, and of those um, 100 at the Carroll, 100 at the Welch, yeah. give or take, those do include your um, income eligible, because those are year-round, so those yep. include them, correct? Actually, all, all contracts continue year-round. Our year 21st round. century grants have a, have a required summer component, so mm -hmm. 120 students who currently you know, have those, 117, I believe, right now have the 21st century. Um, but there are 120 slots that we've been working really closely with the three principals of our 21st century funded sites and making sure that those 120 slots are full. And that's, again, a free program for those students Monday through Thursday for the whole summer. So all of those kids that have that slot now are aware that they can Absolutely. have care for the yep, summer. They have first, part, yep. they have first um, uh, slots for summer. And then any students who currently have a 21st century um, slot and do not want to continue in the summer, they're attending another program, they might be you know, leaving the state to visit relatives or whatever, we open up those slots and work with the principal for new referrals of at-risk students. So those will be filled? They'll all be filled, else absolutely. Season. What are your hours in the summer? Seven to six. Seven to six. Yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. This is done. Thank you, Ms. Dan Otis. Nice to see you both again. Thank you for coming. Um, this was a great presentation. It, al it always is because you give us a lot of information. And um, I know, you know, we're going to enter into negotiations and everything. I had been thinking for a while of how, how can we help the program. And one thing I would like to ask, especially uh, pertinent now that you have the new logo, which I like, because I follow you on Facebook, so I saw the new logo. And um, I would like to ask that we have a link on our school website, if that's something you would like, um, that if we could put a link to the For Kids Only program on our district website to help parents, especially the people who know about it, they know how to find you and everything, but when people are looking to move to a place, they want to find out exactly what's going on in a school district, and I think this is important for people to know about. And I don't think they would know until they, you know, called a specific school or asked a specific question about before and after school care. Having a link on our website might help a lot more people when they make their choices. So, you know, we can work thank that out. All right, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you both for being here tonight, and we will, I will bring back by um, June 25th the information and the data that we have from the West School, and um, we voted at the last school committee meeting um, that I was in negotiation with um, four kids only. So thank you so much for being here tonight for your Thank you for being here. I appreciate all your hard work. Let us know work. if you'd ever like to come and spend a day with our kids. We'd love to have visitors this summer, uh, especially. So. Okay.
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank so you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. The next presentation we have this evening is Mr. Buckley, uh, Principal of Peabody Veterans Memorial High School, um, and Alyssa Di Maria, our Supervisor of Attendance. Um, one of the um, tasks that we were given um, was to look at our attendance policy that needs to be refined. And um, we, Mr. Buckley and his team, have put, uh, put, uh, Mr. Buckley put together a team, um, and he will speak to that. And we would like to have the school committee take a look at this, and we would like to perhaps pilot it. But first, I would like to um, have the presentation, and then we can discuss. Presentation. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Presentation. Yes. We'll, we'll kind of make it up as we you go. You need the yeah. big white one, Mr. Buckley? Yeah, the big screen, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and perhaps um, I'm not doing a good job passing out my notes here that Maji put together beautifully. I'm so sorry. So is let it, me pass is, that out. Is it okay to start? Um, and give you a little bit of history? This. They have to accept oh, they have this. To accept. Motion to receive. Second. Receive so some. Sorry. Okay, thank well, you. thank you for having us here tonight. I'd like to thank uh, Alyssa, too, for being here. I know it's, uh, it's a busy day and a busy schedule for her, too. Um, so she's here, and, and she's probably going to add, add some things that I forget. Um, what I thought we'd do is just, you know, looking at this right off the bat, it says attendance, you know, policy, policies. Um, we really want to make this a pilot. And the more we looked at this, you know, over the last few weeks, we're thinking, well, you know, maybe this might be a little bit much, or this might create some issues. So what I want to do is kind of give you a quick, um, quick history of our attendance policy at the, at the high school um, over the 28 years that I've been there, but I'll keep it very, very brief. Um, years ago, what we did was with, through paper, you know, kid uh, was absent, you kept track of it as a teacher, you filled out a, a form, eight absences, you sent it to what was then the unit director and they failed. Um, and they were pulled out of your class, put into a, a study hall or, or a lounge even back then. So it was kind of a uh, reward. Um, after, after some years, we, we obviously changed that. And what we did was we, we went to a what was called a 64-4. So if we had some kids that were able to pass the classes, um, but were out 15, 16 days and a quarter. So you know, they were just very good students, were able to pull off a grade. Um, so what we did was put the comment, the 04 was the comment sheet where it would say basically your student uh, failed due to absences. And we had that for a while. It was a little bit cumbersome. There was a lot of question around it. And then probably, I want to say maybe 12, 13 years ago, uh, probably 12 to 10 years ago, we started then to introduce the two-point deduction uh, for absences. And, and the point of that was to try to give some, some meat to, if you're missing the day, you have to be there at school, um, but if you're missing it, you're also missing, um, you're also, it, it's also affecting your grade. So 15 absences times two points, 30, you know, you're, you're down to a 70 and, and 65's passing. So that was kind of helping out for a while. I think the math and, and uh, um, the consistency of that over the years got kind of away. Um, and what changed it too was uh, about six or eight years ago, um, through the Department of Ed, um, Office of Civil Rights, they basically said that you can't use the 64-4. You can't fail a student because of absences. Um, so that kind of created a whole new situation for us. And what we tried to do then was, you know, basically the absences, excused, unexcused, whatever they were, um, you basically then had to make up the work. And um, that worked for a while. It's worked f for us, um, I, but it's also brought up some issues with tardies, and what we've tried to do with this policy is tighten it up. So we looked at a lot of the local, especially the NEC, which we were in involved with a lot of their policies, and we were kind of surprised looking at them that some of them were very intensive and very wordy. Um, I was 
looking at ours again and reading through it had a lot of philosophy and vision and mission in it, um, not really getting to the, me the meat of, of, of what we were talking about. Uh, a couple of them were less than a half a page long. And after you read it, I, I remember some of us were looking at each other like, what, what was that? <laughs> like, so the panel, just to add. Um, yeah, sure. The panel that um, Mr. Buckley um, developed, it included myself, the deans, um, teachers, um, the student resource officers, and there were two students there, um, and their input was also, um, yep, very, very valuable uh, as well. Um, so I just wanted to add that, yep. that we had met, um, we met once, we met twice, and we sort of had an ongoing conversation via um, the Google Docs. Yes, so yes. So we were all able to continuously review what we were looking at. But I do agree with Mr. Buckley, when you read piece of it in the Tanner handbook, there was a lot of stuff about the mission state. It was speak you had already read that. So if you're a parent and you're going oh sorry. If you're a parent and you're going to the section of attendance, one of the things we all talked about is after, you know, maybe the first half a page, you want to make sure you're getting the message of the, clearly what that attendance policy is, whether you're a student, a parent, um, an educator. And so we were able to um, and I know you'll speak a little bit more about that, but I just wanted to add that part of it, what the panel consisted of, so we all were able to um, provide input. Thank you. That was good. So um, one of the, the, we kind of identified areas, and again, with, the, with the, even school council, we brought this up at the end of last year. We talked a little bit about it this year, and just reading over some things. And again, with some of our, our different things that have, um, come to light, it's, it's a lot of times it's student driven. And some of the students that we had were really insightful on, you know, the inequities of, of, of toddies versus absences. One of the things we run into, um, if four toddies is a, after your fourth toddy, it's a detention. Well, if there's no penalty for absences, the kid rather take the day off, not serve the <laughs> detention. And, you know, in a, in, in a good thing and in, in bad thing is, is with our, our Chromebooks and one-to-one -one and, and Google Docs, kids are able to, you know, stay, stay up with what's going on in the classroom, the assignments. So they didn't fall too far behind by missing that day, too. So what we, we're trying to address the issues of making sure that there's something there, not to punish kids, but to try to change the culture as far as showing up to school. You need to be there, um, whether it's even after school activities whether it's performing arts, sports, whatever. People are there on time for practices, you need to be on time for school. So we're trying to change the behavior long term. Again, this is, we'd like to do this as a pilot because I think we're gonna see some things at work next year. I think there's gonna be some other things that we may run into questions that we'll have to answer as we go and maybe update. Um, we're not trying to fail kids, we're just trying to make them more accountable uh, and for the time that they need to be in school. So. Um, you know, I know Ms. Murtag always says every student every day, uh, you know, I'm thinking every student on time every day would be kind of a nice thing to kind of add to that. Um, th and and th as you look at this, right off the bat, you know, between the ages of it, it has Massachusetts law, between 6 and 16 you must attend school. Um, little things like that. Chronic absenteeism is 10% is or more you're missing school, which is 18 absences over the year. And we have kids that have well, ex you know, far exceeded that number. Um, so we want them in school. It's always been said, I remember when I first started teaching, you know, people saying if you're not in school to kids, you're not learning, you have to be there. And I know technology has changed that a, a bit, but we do need them there and, and, and focusing on the whole, um, the whole student. As you see too, the DESE on that first page, they recognize hospitalization, bereavement, or religious holidays as really the only excused absence. So as this goes further into the policy, it has some notifications as far as uh, when certain things kick in. We'll, we are looking at three areas. Um, basically, the categories are excused, documented, unexcused and ex unexcused absences. So those are the three areas that we're looking to, to put these kids' uh, absences into. Uh, we're, we're gonna look for a little bit more parent involvement with notes. We're gonna go back to the notes. I, I know, again, these other attendance policies we've, we've had in the past, it, it, it starts getting into forgeries and, and doctors' notes that aren't, tr so we're, we're hoping that, you know, with technology and stuff, there's, a, there's been a lot more communication. We can have certain, uh, 
certain things on that so that we can call a parent, parents calling in if they, their child's going to be out. We also saw a thing with if a kid is not in school by 1050, he could not participate in um, after school extracurricular activities. We've moved that to 8 o'clock. Um, and that's going to be a, a change there. And again, we, we're trying to, two areas too, we're, we're trying to make sure that the kids aren't coming in at, you know, say fourth period. But one of the other problems we have is just that, that time, um, that two or three minutes that they're tardy. And of course, the response is always, well, I'm only two minutes late. And he said, yeah, true, but if you were two minutes early, it, you know, it would have been, there wouldn't been an issue. So. We're going to try to work on that. We have a couple other ideas of, of maybe looking at the schedule and, and, and changing our morning routine around a little bit. Um, but th there are some things in here that you can see that other, other schools, as far as now having Aspen, that we can use a little bit differently as far as documentation and, and the different uh, codes that can be used there. And then we have the, you know, the maximum allowance and what counts towards that maximum um, number. We also have put in here, too, that we will have a little bit of, um, we, we will event eventually have an attendance board too to kind of review some of these because one thing that we get into is the HIPAA violations. You know, everybody wants an attendance policy that's black and white and it's probably the most gray area in school because you have the kid that's, you know, chronically absent that you try, you try, you try and I know um, Alyssa here deals with, with, with those kids very well uh, and she's been a, a rock star as far as is trying to get those kids coming to school. But we also have the kids with um, mental health issues, anxiety, long-term hospitalization, or, or you know, in and out of the doctors. Those are the type of things that, when we have that board, the dean is usually available with, of that, uh, with those situations. Um, we could have you know, some of the teachers on that. People that know what's going on and, and really look at that and say, okay, he, he had a bad first quarter or second quarter, he or she, but you know what, he's been, or she's been rock solid since for the other three quarters. The big thing here too is the no credit. That's the, that's the bite here is that, okay, so you receive a grade. Um, if you get an N, it's because you've gone over is the absences. And then at the end of the year, we'll review that, we'll look at that. If it was just for one quarter, okay, they will get the credits. It's all or nothing as far as the credits, but if it's been three out of the four quarters that they've been way over as far as absences, um, they're not going to receive credit. And we're still talking about that. That's what a lot of uh, the local schools have done in, in the high schools. Um, and I think with Aspen, it might be a little bit more manageable than our older system, which is great. And again, I'm going to be talking with some of those people to see how, how do they manage it. I do know that any kind of change with this is going to be, there's going to be a lot of work to this. Um, we're going to be kind of learning as we go too and, and we'll be tested as far as where the, the loopholes are in it and stuff. So um, that's where we're at with it, but that's really the big thing is to really kind of change what's, what's been happening with toddies, with absences, try to get to kid, uh, kids into school a lot more in the no credit. The no credit um, kind of covers us um, with that 64 for kind of situation. We're not putting ourselves in that situation with the DESE. And, and just to add, with the no credit, it allows, it does give the child the opportunity to make up the work. Um, and that's really important because we don't want kids to fail. We don't want them to feel like this is a punishment. It's, you know, 99% of life is showing up. And if you're not showing up, um, and I think that's one of the main things that some of the kids that were on our panel said is the kids know that they don't have to show up sometimes. They can just do their work from home. So I think there has to be some type of, um, as we do with the tardies, we need some kind, something else with, with the absences. And with the no credit, it does, get, it does put some onus on the student to follow up um, with their dean, with their guidance counselor, and the teachers to get their makeup work. But it also sends sort of a red flag to parents to say, oops, wait a minute, we have to look at this. We got an N. We, it calls more of an attention sooner rather than later um, that the attendance is a red flag. So I just wanted to add that point. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else. I think, so. yeah, I, think that's, I think a lot of it is just reading the document, seeing how it's organized. Right. And we're just trying to pro promote good attendance. So if anyone has any questions, we'll try to answer them. They might be good questions. And we, if we can't answer them, we'll, we'll get back to you on, on the answers. Ms. Carpenter. Thank you. Um, 
Thank you both for being here. This is a, a, a document that I definitely want to have a little bit more time to review. There's a lot of information here. Um, just a couple of highlight things maybe we could go over. So in regards to our previous policy, um, was it four tardies and then you got a detention? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this new pilot, it's three, and then on the fourth you get a detention. So is it just one? It's just one less. Or did you get a detention on the? Did that number change at all? Um, if it's on there, we can switch back. No, we weren't thinking that. I don't know if that's a, a typo or not. So you're you're asking. So on the fourth. On the, so on the fourth. On the fourth one, you get a detention. So the current policy wasn't after the fourth one. It was on the fourth as well. You know, honestly, I've read so many policies. I, I know. I, I'm I not know. even sure. Yeah, but I think it's on the fourth. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the same. Yeah. Okay. So my question on the no credit. Okay, so this is the difference now. Okay. So on the no credit, and I haven't read all of this, so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I might be asking questions that are in here, but we just haven't had an opportunity no, to read it. Um, so after four absences in a term, mm -hmm. you get an N. In, on their report card, and and in, like which, where does the N go? On For which? The grade. So which, if it's well, chemistry, you get an N. For the absences of like the whole day, how do you figure out which class you're getting the N in? So it's four more absences within each class with each quarter. Within each class. Right, within each quarter. So if you miss first period, consistently. You're going to be unexcused, right. right. You'll, have, you'll, you'll get an N, and that will be reviewed at the end of the year, whereas you, you, you're chronically late in coming in at you know, 8.30 for the start or 8.25 for the start of the second period. So you're always there mm -hmm. along. You, you see what I'm saying? But it's, it's the chemistry. It's the first period that's the problem. It may be even more classes than that. Mm -hmm. Might be on the end of the day getting dismissed all the time. So what we're doing is holding that grade, yep. that, that's say 72, uh, but it's going down as an N for now, and then we will review the unexcused absences and the reasons. Again, the three things that are, are excused by the DESE is right there, and, right. You, and we know that there's a lot more than that. If, you, if you're just out sick for the day, you're going to be sick, you're going to get a note from your, you know, who's ever, your parent, guardian, whoever it may be. Um, but if you have eight or nine of those in the first quarter with no doctor's notes, well, even a doctor's note, but there's no hospitalization involved, you get in the end. So what is the review? What is the fix for the end? What's that, how does that opportunity that's gonna work? That's going to be the, okay. so that's up to the so review. It's up to the student. The student would need to set up a meeting to meet with their dean and their guidance counselor to determine what they need to do to either make up the course in its entirety. Let's say they missed the whole... Let's say they missed first period for the whole year. We have kids who come in tardy, let's say they missed the first period. They may have to make up that entire course. And or they may only have a certain portion of that course to make up. So that will be determined in a meeting between the dean, the student, and the guidance counselor. And the parent. We're and the parent. To, we're going to encourage the parents to be a little bit more involved with these reviews. And it also, I see in the end, you're putting the, the, not only the, uh, the, the student, but the parent on notice that we have an attendance issue here, along with phone calls, along with the emails that go out consistently, too. But now you're seeing an N, you're not seeing a, a 72, or you're seeing, because the, the 72 might be there the first quarter, but the 15 absences is down below. Mm -hmm. So that would require a review. person may say, well, geez, you, you seem like you're doing okay with that, that class. Even you got a 72, but mm -hmm. you have too many absences. 15 absences in the first quarter, you're looking at 60 absences over the, the course of a year, and that's too much. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. LaFour just has a comment. Hey, I think I might be able to clarify some of the procedures for, mm -hmm. for people. Sure. Uh, period by period attendance was started this year. So every teacher takes attendance from every student every, every period every day. So you can see that on the report card. What Aspen does is maintains their grade behind the scenes. When they hit that fourth absence, the teacher at report card time puts a little N for the grade, even though the, the number is still calculated behind the scenes. Well, the beauty of this policy is that it doesn't punish the student academically. They still keep up with their grades. 
Later on in the year, they might get another rent in the second quarter. The grade is still being calculated behind the scenes. I know what their grade is, but they've got to make up for that attendance. If there were some issues that come up, you know, they have a view May, June, hey, this was an issue, you've been great for the last two quarters, then that those two ends will disappear. The grade that they had earned would land on their report card so that their final transcript comes out with, a, um, with an accurate grade based on this decision that's made on their attendance. But the N is a little flag that is maintained just at report card time while the actual grade is being maintained behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't penalize the kid academically, <clears throat> but they do recognize the fact they need to be physically present in class. So anytime there's an N, it will require a meeting for a review to remove the N, right. and that is after four absences. Unexcused absences. Unexcused. Unexcused. Yes, but based on this, excused absences are just hospitalization, bereavement, and religious holidays, correct? Right. Those are yep. excused. Those are the only excused. That's correct. It was my understanding that there were a few others, but I don't have our, our book in front of us right now. Certain like college visits, um, I think somebody had even asked to make sure, like military graduations, those type of things were excused. Well, that, you got three freebies. You can take three, like college visits. That's okay, but they are not excused. Yeah, this this is those those three. Uh, Ms. Carpenter is just what the DESC. What the DESC. Right. Okay. That might be something that, again, with a review board looks at and say, okay. It, they, I think we even put in here something about college visits mm -hmm. that you. Yeah. We looked yes. at. I think it's two, right? So, so college visits, it's documented unexcused. So um, one of the things that we, we determine is three days annually with documentation, you know, mm -hmm. approval from their dean or guidance counselor and documentation that they actually went to either a college visit or I think it was a um, whatever other. It was military. Accepted college day, military day. Accepted college day. So three, three, we said three. Three. And those are, ex those are still, they're documented. So we know that our kids are somewhere where they're supposed to be, but they're still not, by the DESE, not considered excused, mm -hmm. which, you know, we find, you know, it definitely doesn't help with our attendance rate because they're still, we're still having kids who are being marked absent, even though we know, but, the, the, even though we know the reason that they're out, but in accordance with DESE, it doesn't fit into the criteria for technically excused absence. So I, I know that I know that there's other questions here. I just have one other clarification. Just to clarify, if a student is absent four times in a term, and I'm talking about the full day, they could essentially end up with all ends in every class. Would they have to meet with every single is that a separate meeting with the review? I'm trying to think of an example. I'm thinking okay, the the fourth one was a they were homesick and we knew that they were sick because we saw them leaving or something. Mm -hmm. That would cover, that would then put them under the three so you wouldn't have to meet on every single yeah. case by case. But in that discussion, yeah, we may be looking, if the numbers are different, yeah. periods one through seven, we may, we may. Because somebody could be sick for four days, well, I mean, but they're Absolutely. sick, yeah. That, that's, this is the kind of tough, this is one of the things that when we were looking at this, you start to go, ooh, wow, there's, a, there's not a lot of wiggle room here as far as there's the state goes. And I'm, I just have a slight concern about the review process, where we're going to go, because it is an area that is not black or white, just as you've said, right. and mm -hmm. it's just concerning when you get and some of no those credit. Right, and some of those things are laid out there with the um, documented unexcused, and I hope, hopefully, and we're hoping that that will help explain why you want to maybe take that N, N away. And I, and I totally understand all of this. I know. I know the kids get, you know, 720 and they, you know, take the day off instead. It's easier. Um, other students more than, you know. Others. Others. Yep. Um, I just have some concerns about the review process. I have some concerns about parents who may not attend that review process with their child. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to see somebody get stuck with a no credit. <laughs> who doesn't have the backing behind them to help them remove that no credit. Well, I, I think um, we're very aware of that. And I think you are too. And I, I think what, you know, when reviewing some of this stuff, we were, I think, all taken, taken aback by how strict the state regulates this. Mm -hmm. 
I think what we are looking at is, is hopefully sitting down with not a huge group either because then it gets too, mm -hmm. too crazy. But you know, when you're talking deans, guidance counselor, a teacher, um, you know, a parent, student, it's usually pretty cut and dry of, of is, yeah. this, is this a chronic issue or is this uh, a, a, an isolated case where somebody has had you know, like a, the flu for the week or right. something like right. that and, and, and wasn't hospitalized but was home sick was home and things sick. like that. So some of it we may not even have to have the students and, and spend a lot of time on it. We, we may take a list of say 50 kids and say okay, 40 of them here, we, we know that we're good and we're okay. So yeah, no, I, we would never penalize a kid because they couldn't make a meeting or the parent couldn't make a meeting or something like that. We, we still want to make sure that we're, again, like we said, it's not, it's not, this shouldn't be seen as a punishment. We're trying to change some of their, their habits, um, especially for when they get older and go into the workforce and, and, and things like that. But on the same sense too, their, their kids, they, you know, everyone gets sick. We, we want to make sure that we're giving them every opportunity, but there has to be something there holding the, their, the hands to the fire a little of bit. Of course, yeah. okay. Thank you, I'm sorry I took up a lot no. of time. No. Mr. Miko. Thank you through the chair to our visitors here. Thank you, Mr. Buckley, thank you for 28 years. Um, <laughs> that really hit me when you said that because Peabody has changed so much in 28 years. It's changed in the 16 years that I've been here. It's changed in the last three to five years. And I think it will continue to change. And I feel as, thank you for looking at this policy. Um, policy or not, bottom line is if we can't help students, we can't educate them. I don't care where you are, I don't care if you're white, minority, rich, or poor. So attendance policies, and I hear people, oh, you know, you know, kids have to show up to school. Well, some kids can't show up to school because they're sick, they're mentally sick. Some kids don't have a father like I had who would rip me out of bed and say, get to school yeah. or else, <laughs> okay? And you know, I grew up in an Italian family, and, yep. and you know, it's, it was typical. You, you got out of bed and you went to school. You know, 50 years ago, 70 years ago, if People didn't go to school, they quit and they went to work. Our kids can't quit because it's, you, know, you have to be in school until 16. So I'm, I'm great with all these attendance policies, but again, this is, this is bigger than us. This is a DESE issue, this is a state issue, this is a funding issue. We don't have enough people to help our kids and until the state and everyone else wants to help fund us, this is where we're gonna be. Yeah. You know, and attend we, can, we can play with the attendance policy all we want. Some kids just can't make it to school. I'm sorry I'm going off on this, but this is this is passion. This is something that I believe in. Yep. And if you know if you haven't been in a classroom the five, ten, last five or ten years, you have no idea what's going on in our schools. Right. And that's Peabody. That's any city around here. You know. So we really this has this is bigger than us. But I applaud you for bringing this to us. And I think um, you know any changes to the current policy, I'm okay with. But thank you. No, and I, I'm smiling because I couldn't agree with you more. And um, again, this is, I, I think sometimes when you do nothing, you fall behind. So again, this is another reason why instead of making it a hardcore core policy right away, we may get a couple months into this and start to see some, some issues or holes and, and say, okay, we need to adjust. And again, this past year graduating some students, you know, there were some kids that right up to right up to the 48 hours before we're, we're working and uh, we made sure that we, you know, they got through and, and made up what they needed to. So yes, I, I think it's gonna keep evolving too. Thank you. Mr. Hawker. Thank you, Mr. Notice. Thank you for bringing a, a revised um, policy to us for, at least for review, and I, I suspect piloting after we review it. Um, and Mr. Miko brings up some terrific points. Um, although I'm not necessarily opposed to a strict attendance policy. We need to get kids to school. The focus of how we get kids to school, I think may be different from what your committee has been working on and what the focus 20 years ago uh, was. We do live in, it with, in a different world with a different population and we're also um, realizing that um, adolescents function differently. Right, than, than we thought they did when we created policies like starting high school at 7.20 in the morning. I mean, I think if you really dig deep and drill down into the uh, data that you have, and you already have it, you'll see that there's more tardies or absences in first and second period than there are later in the day, because maybe because it's the policy, if you get there before 10, you get to play in sports or participate in the arts or whatever is of interest to that particular student. But part of it is the reality that, you know, hey, if a kid doesn't get up at, at uh, some kids 5.30 to get ready for school to catch a bus, they're not getting to school. 
And, and um, you know, I, I know Ms. Carpenter has on the agenda tonight the school start time, and I think that they're interconnected. Um, but as far as, you know, some of the concerns about legitimate illness, we're all concerned about kids being legitimately physically yeah. ill, and they should get treatment and care and not come to spread germs and, and illness around buildings to staff or to other students. But if that's the issue, I think your policy covers it because, like you said, if there's one quarter where there's four or more absences and that's attributable to a legitimate illness, they're going to get an N, but the other three quarters, they should be in school, right? So I don't see that, I mean, I don't, you know, if there's a, a flu or, or some epidemic running around, you know, then you may see a lot of kids in one quarter with this issue, but um, the other three quarters should have better attendance and um, then I would, I would think that the procedure that seems to be put into place here with this review um, would account for that and move that's the student in the right place. Yeah. So I, th I think too, when you were looking at the number four, that's just not an option. If, if we made the number five, well now, now we're going against the state because now we're basically saying, well, you're, you're chronically absent. <laughs> you know, we're making a policy that's already set the kids up for being chronically and, absent, so. And it's an arbitrary number. It's an arbitrary right. number that the state selected, so we're obligated to follow it. But I mean, it, but you're addressing, you know, the, the areas where the state um, recognizes excused absences. Yep. And then, like, I, like I, I believe or I think I hear you saying, if there's one of four quarters where there's five absences and that's attributable to an illness or to, you know, uh, um, that's not going to impact the student's grade. I mean, they may still need to make up the work and, they, and things like that, but it's not going to impact a grade with an N. They're going to get credit after this review process. It seems like more often than not, that's the intent of it. That is. All right. And I apologize, I have to leave early tonight, so thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. Thank you. Mr. Ellen Peel. Yeah, through, through the chair. Uh, thank you for coming. I appreciate you guys uh, taking a look at this and certainly making sure that we're in compliance with the state. But I, I do think my only concern, it's probably your concern as well, is it's that gray area. It's, I know adults that have four bad days in a month or two. Um, so I would hope that the attendance review panel could take, you know, would you know, not be liberal, but, you know, there are just some kids that have bad days. Or what if their only opportunity to see their mother or their father who lives in Florida is exactly. they have to hop on a plane on a Thursday and they miss two days of school? Um, what if they need that? Um, what if they have two days where they have extreme anxiety that they might not be able to get a doctor's note. I mean, that's, that's the stuff that I, because I know adults that, again, they have four bad days and they could have four bad days in two weeks. And it doesn't uh, necessarily make, you know, make it a, a chronic problem, but uh, you know, those are the things that I'm thinking about. And I know what you're saying. I think we, we, we're setting a bar. Yeah. And then I think, that bar, anyone close to that bar, we're really looking, those are the gray areas. Yeah. What we're trying, like you said, uh, jumping a flight to Florida. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the problem is, is when they disappear for three yeah. weeks to Florida, um, come sure. back for four days and then they're gone, you know, Right, and, right. and there's a weeks. bigger issue, but I'm and, hoping. And, and those are the yeah. things that I think we're really, this is hopefully going to okay. try to control some of that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. This has been, oh. Well, Mr. <laughs> I'm red light. not getting out of here without questions from me. Hang on a second. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's been really, I, I know, a, a necessary area that you had to do some work on. And um, just skimming through it, I just do have a couple of questions. One, um, I know things are different now with the report cards and parents can go into the portal and all of that. Is there any type of notification that will go to the parent if the student has been absent for four days, or do they wait for the report card? Like, no, no we, we, we have sent um, letters, the deans generate letters now um, as far as absences, they make calls, emails. They're, they're pretty on top of those things, along with, I mean, it was 
good decision to bring back the attendance clerks because they're going to be very busy <laughs> next year. Yeah. I want, uh, they're already busy now, but this is going to add a little bit more to them too. Yeah, and do you have, if I may, do you have a like a, a requirement that you know notification is going to go back at such and such a point <coughs> with a student? Like how many absences or tardies will um, would they be allowed to commit before the school contacts? Actually, let me, let me yeah. rephrase that. When you have notice and a parent is calling you, letting you know the student is going to be late or going to be absent, that is a bit different. I'm talking about the, the people who um, don't give any, any notice, um, and then the student doesn't bring in a note. At what point will you start contacting the family? Yeah, I, we'll, we'll work on that number. Okay. Um, but I, I, again, I think with, with the deans that we have and the communication with the attendance clerks are very good. And, uh, and with Alyssa coming on board, um, they've been meeting. One thing we did this year was when she came on was we started re uh, meeting on a truancy panel and going over some of the kids that she may have, um, you know, into court or some of the issues that we may be having or we're starting to see a trend and, and looking into that. So I think you've met, like, you usually come and meet with ABC, C, 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 right down the line. Every Friday this year we started, so I came up on board in October. We probably, I think we started, we got the whole process running probably about a month and a half later. Um, but we met every Friday. Um, what we did was each dean, we did house A, B, and C, half hour blocks. Parents were invited. Um, the student was invited, the dean and myself. And we did, we looked at any, th any five, six, seven, eight plus absences because we said, you know what, if they already have five, it's going to double. So we looked at the just sort of the trends. Mm -hmm. So we did. And if a parent couldn't be available, let's say because they had to be at work, we, we speaker phoned them in. Um, you know, granted, it's always nice to meet in person, but we understand parents sometimes have to work um, and can't be there. So we did that. And, um, you know, it, it actually, we've had a lot of success with it, I, I think. Um, and, you know, and, and there have been, and when I say success, we've also had to involve the court process, but I also think that can be supportive to families because sometimes we can utilize the court to get the services that families may need um, to kind of sort of help them get out of whatever it is that is sort of barriers. Um, so we, we did that on Friday, so that seemed to work. We'll continue that next year. Mm -hmm. And I also think with, with some parents, too, it's, it's amazing, and, it, and probably people in here, um, what we know and what the kids sometimes tell the parents are two separate things, and sometimes you start questioning yourself about certain things, like, oh, I thought it was five absences, not four, or, or whatever it may be. So um, I think with that t type of constant communication, we have all these ways of communicating, yet, you know, with, with email, with constant contact, with, with the, the actual phone calls, you know, all this and, and somehow what we're trying to do is make sure that no one gets lost in the, in, the, in the cracks. And that's the big thing. And they did a really good job this year with the, de the deans really, really staying on top of kids, mostly focused on the ninth, ninth and twelfth grade, really. Yeah. Um, and, and not only just because of the time and, and nice. making sure that seniors were going to be seniors and graduate and making sure of the ninth. I think, too, with this, this is something that I think for the whole district needs to be because when they come to the ninth grade, um, if this hasn't been something that they've been used to, it, it's hard again, just like with passing courses and, and moving on in credits. If, if, if it's not there, if they've missed 30, 40 days of school and, and come to the high school, it's hard to tell them, well, it's not going to work here. We do, we do that. I, I, one example is over the years is the credits to graduate. And, and they don't understand that just time served. <laughs> We've had actually some of our juniors slash seniors talk to uh, some of our ninth grade seminar kids about, yeah, I didn't believe it either, but believe it, it's, it's not going to happen. So it puts them behind, you know, we, we do our best to get them all caught up. You know, we may have a kid. We have, we've already even graduated, I think, four or five kids since the actual graduation date um, that, have, that have finished up, and we still have a few more that will finish before, I think, August. Actually, thank you, Mr. Buckley, because that was one of my points that I wanted to ask about. Um, you had mentioned earlier it's got to be a culture change where people mm -hmm. understand you have to show up to school, and that, to me, is something we can't just start at the high school. Right. We need to start that at the elementary school, continue it right through the middle school so that when the students are at the high school, that is an accepted fact. That is 
part of how you grow up in this city. You show up to school. And I really do think, and, and I would like us to look into a coordinated effort in the whole school district, K to 12, on attendance. DESE has some materials. There are groups with you know, posters and publications and different things. It's, it's very important at the high school, but it's a habit that's learned at the, at, at the earliest point. Mm -hmm. And it isn't just the students that need to understand this, the families do. We have to stress this and we can't stress it enough. So it isn't just on all of you to do this. It is a full school department work that we all need to help with. And um, I think we, we really need to do a very coordinated, roll this out right in September and say, okay, here it is. You're all on record now. You all know you have to come to school. Parents, you have to put your kids in school. Here's the policy. And I know it's a little different at different levels. And I can understand that. But um, we, we need to help to, get, to, to have them grow up to understand this. Uh, there was just one other point that I wanted to ask, and again, it was just because I've been skimming through. I will tell you something that I really did like in the old policy. And I can't remember if it was in the old policy or if it was just in the high school handbook, but <laughs> there was a piece that told people how long they had to make up work. And it was because you would have students who would miss, you know, 25 or 30 days, whatever. And then the night before <laughs> grades, they would show up with, you know, the book reports, the homework, the oak tag with the pasted pictures, the whole bit, dump it on the teacher and say, well, I made it all up. And you actually had a very good system of requiring makeup. And I can't remember the days. I want to say that I you think had it was to make a week. It, within a week, yeah. uh, you had to speak to the teacher. Yeah. And um, again, that was a good habit to learn. But I also think it was a, a big necessity because sometimes teachers would face this onslaught before they had to do their grades. If they were prepared because of whatever, you know, a student had specific illness and had worked with the teacher and the teacher had said, yes, you can bring this in. That was different. But this was somebody just showing up and then having parents who were outraged that the teacher wasn't going to grade all this work when they were already trying to grade the work that they had planned on and, you know, it had all built up. So that's something I don't know if you have it, but I thought that yeah, was, was very good uh, as a parent. Alyssa just pointed out it was actually 10. And, and again, that's what we were talking about, the black and the white and then the gray. Because right. like you just mentioned, you may have the kid that's been out with some serious yeah. issues, whether it's mental health, physical, family loss, whatever it is. We, we try to work on that by a case-by-case exactly. -case basis and a teacher-by-teacher -teacher basis too, right, which very sometimes isn't, isn't the best way to do it. But um, I, I think sometimes, again, it's how comfortable the kid is in, in talking to the, the teacher, the administrator, whatever, about the situation. Right. Um, but that's some, something too that we, we try to support the teachers on too. I mean, yeah, as far as the, the, the work coming in, in, in late or whatever. Right, because it could be overwhelming, I'm sure, with, with all the other different things going on at that time. And just simple courtesy, really. I mean, that's really what a lot of this is, treating people the way they expect you to treat them. When you graduate from school and you get a job, you need to have the simple courtesy of showing up on time. You, you need to notify people. You need to communicate. So um, it, Maybe it another is. another meeting. <laughs> another discussion. <laughs> but I thank you. Um, I'll be honest. I really do want to read through it. Yep. But I think it, if we can bring it forward at our next meeting, I think we'd probably all be set to discuss and vote on it. But okay. right. thank and, you. And if Great. any questions do come up, just you can give me a call at school, give me a call on myself. Because there are things probably in there that we haven't totally, you know, um, Maybe there's some, some questions there for us that right. not only I, uh, myself and Alyssa, but we can take it back to 
the, the students, the parent, the you know, SRO, the deans, and, and, and kind of work that, that question through. Yeah. Um, that, that's why even tonight, I didn't want to, you know, when you were asking questions, I, I, I wasn't speaking for everybody because I think everyone, when we, when we worked on this, it was a great group with the teachers and, and people were really in agreement, so. Um, but if there's something there that maybe all, all, all five or six different people, I think there was probably, what, 10 or 12 total, maybe missed or, or didn't think of that, that we would, would welcome that um, input. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Amico? Through the chair to our committee, um, I, I don't think we can talk about attendance without bringing up Essex Tech. I think this is a major problem. We have a lot of kids at the high school. I won't say a lot. I'll just say hypothetically 20 per grade, grade. so that's 80 to 100 kids that um, had their sights set on going to Essex Tech, maybe to learn a trade, and now they're in a building where we do have some mm -hmm. vocational uh, programs, but we don't have what they want. And let's face it, and I, and I know the mayor has spoken on this, and we're, we're trying to work with Essex Tech to get some more programs in and to get some, kids, some of our kids over to Essex Tech to take some of these courses. But I think that's a major problem with attendance, too. You know, if, if, if we don't have what kids need or want, and they're not book kids. They're, they're not going to college. Some of these kids aren't going to college. I think we all grew up with someone, or two or three, that weren't students. They wanted to be carpenters, electricians, or plumbers. And have done very well. And they're doing very well, probably <laughs> yeah. better than all of us. But we're not providing that. So I, I, know, I know, Ms. Dunn, you, and I agree with you, you said there's a, there needs to be a cultural shift. There needs to be a systematic shift. And that needs to mm -hmm. come from top to bottom. And we need to be part of that. And I think um, whether it's this old school here that we have now at the high school or the new school, we have to have full vocational programs. We have to fight for it fully because we're mm -hmm. losing kids to attendance too mm -hmm. because they don't want to go to school because they don't want to read books. They want to read manuals on how to fix things and build things, and we're not providing that for them right now. I'll get off my soapbox now. No, but you're right, and I think if you look at some of our CTE programs that we have, they'd be like medical assisting. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's gone through the roof. And, and we, we actually have sometimes kids that, you know, we're full and, and, and sometimes they have to pick their second choice. But, um, no, we have some very, very successful programs and, and with a new high school maybe coming online at some point, those are things that you're going to have to look at as far as adding programs mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Uh, Ms. Dunn. Just for the record. <laughs> I'm going to send this to your committee, so it's coming. <laughs> DESE's choice of terminology still leaves so much to be desired. The confusion between excused, documented, unexcused, and unexcused. First time I've seen it explained, I know there'll be codes, but I do hope that we give information to parents because yeah. it is so confusing. The, the, when the report cards come out, I, I know you probably get a ton of calls from people about, what do you mean unexcused? I sent in a note. I made one of those phone calls myself, so <laughs> many years ago. So <laughs> the thing that really is frustrating, I wish that they could think of something just to make it distinctive so parents understand it, kids understand it, school committee understands it, um, but I know you're stuck with that terminology, and, and hopefully and that, Aspen will help with this. Yes. And that was something that did come up even in our, when we formulated this policy. There were things that um, we said, you know what, this is some basic ideas of how to get this information out to parents, and, and mm. we have some ideas on that too. Yeah, because it, it is always confusing. Thank you. So this I'll is to send a letter into the DESC. <laughs> so this is a major goal of the district, district-wide, Ms. Dunn. So we are on it, but um, they had a wonderful team. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Thank you, Ms. Maria. But we are definitely looking at this district-wide. As you can see, that's one thing we tackled this year is, is attendance. And um, you'll see on our monthly report that uh, our, um, we had increased attendance, which was exciting. But we do need to get um, this clearer and clarify things, get students to understand, parents to understand everything that's going on, and that's what we hope to do in the new school year. Actually, could we, if, if I may, could we get the attendance policy for the middle school and the elementary for our next meeting? Just Absolutely. As a reference. Thank you. All right. Um, just to wrap this up, thank you. Oh, Ms. Scoppinger. No, it's a, it's a wrap-up, so I might follow you after you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, I'll do my thing here. Um, considering there are many questions, I'm going to hold off on my questions and ingest this to see if the answers are in here before I ask them. But what I'd like to do is send this to subcommittee if we can do that. Uh, quality and standards would be ideal if anyone would like to make that motion. 
Follow the recommendation of the chair. Thank you. Second. And perhaps if we could expedite this so we sure. could do it, you know, okay. I don't know when, I don't know when our next meeting is at. 25th. 25th, okay, so yep. if we could, okay. great. All right, thank you so, both. Ms. So Coppa, do you have anything on this before yeah, we? Yeah, I do. So okay. do, I'm assuming you're gonna need this by the 25th because you have to get ready for the next school year. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, just two things. One is a comment that you made which I agree with about when you start to read a page and then you go, okay. So my suggestion would to be to put, the, in my opinion, the hardest part right at the beginning, so when the parent goes to see what the tardy policy or you know, absent policy is, is you're gonna get an N. So then if they need to figure it out, then they can read the summary after, because there's a lot, which I have to read. But if we do agree to pilot this, for the school year, one of my requests would be to get an update from you each quarter. Mm -hmm. sure. Do you think you can do it? I'll give you the big white one if you come <laughs> yeah, back well, each quarter. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and again too, you know, I, I can do that, the, uh, the deans, because they're dealing with it daily too, yeah. and, and they're good, so we'll put something together that way too. And if you do see things that, you know, it's funny you said that, because when I'm flipping through, if you think there's a different order things should be in, mock it up and, and let us know and we'll make sure that we... I think the hardcore stuff should be right away because that's what, when I'm a parent, I'm like, oh, yeah. what's the policy on this? Sure. Well, I mm -hmm. read the whole book, though. You know that, right? This is done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this, there is a lot of information in there here. There is a lot. And to get to the, the main meat of it, I say first and then all the explanations after. Yeah. Sure. Good point. Good idea. Very good point. Okay. Good. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's roll call. All right, roll call. I would have done that. On what? Who's on the Who's on that committee? The subcommittee. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Jared's on there. No. Yes. So Jared, I'm sorry, who's on the subcommittee? It's, Jared. it's Mr. Amika, I mean, Mrs. Dunn, Mr. Hockman, and myself. Yes. No, it's, no. it's, it's. For the quality and standards? Quality and standards, it, I have it right here. <laughs> quality and standards is done, I notice Olympia. Correct. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. <laughs> yes. Olympio, I'm just moving everything around tonight. Hey, you will not be confused. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we need to go back to the approval minutes. All right, we're going to go back to the approval of minutes for the May 28, 2019 regular school committee. Um, motion to approve regular school committee meeting minutes dated May 28, 2019. Second. All right, roll call vote. Oh. Discussion. On page yeah. five of those minutes, there's an error. School safety subcommittee should be Mr. Olympio yeah. stated a meeting yeah. is scheduled. <coughs> okay. That's it. That's the only correction. Roll call. Yes. 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 All right. We need an approval for the May 29th public hearing on the budget meeting minutes. Motion to approve the May 29th, 2019 public hearing on budget meeting minutes. Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 No. Approval of bills. I'd like to make a motion to approve warrant A, number 4184, dated June 11th, 2019, in the amount of $84,317.89, subject to audit. Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Hathaway? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve Warren B, number 4185, dated June 11, 2019, in the amount of $279,226.85, subject to audit. Second. Roll call. Mrs. Hathaway? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will move on to continued business. Mrs. Dunn, MSBA Higgins Project. We're working on some issues still to finish out. Uh, paperwork is being processed on the closeout of the project, but there will still be things um, taking place as far as some repairs, the sound system, we're going to look at that. And there is one thing that, um, that I would like to report. Um, 
we had a beautiful dedication ceremony on Sunday and the rice fields have been now appropriately opened and um, the monument is absolutely, it, it is really truly a beautiful spot and a lovely, lovely uh, inscription on the monument and um, thank you to the Rice family for guiding us with this and to all of the fire department and the police who showed up at the ceremony and all the people from the public who attended. It was a really very, very nice day. Mm -hmm. So um, technically it's one, one completion of a piece of the Higgins mm -hmm. building project. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. That's great. Uh, Mrs. Coppender, change in school start times. Nothing to report at this time. Okay. Uh, Ms. Dunn? FY20 budget updates. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the reason uh, that this is on here is by virtue of my request at our public hearing. I really would like to know um, the plans involved in um, taking care of the changes that we're going to face with the cuts that we made to the budget. Um, I'd like to know about the foreign language department at the high school. I would like to know the impact of the cuts at the Welch Elementary School. I would like to know the impact of the Title I grant paying for the ELL uh, program and um, there are others. I'm, I'm going to go three at a time, but uh, those right off the bat are some that I would be interested in. And Ms. Dunn, I will have a thorough report for you once I would like to meet with City Council on Thursday night and once things move forward there, uh, and plus everything that's going on end of the school year, I will have a um, re somewhat of a report for you on June 25th, I hope, to do that moving forward okay. and at each meeting. Okay. Um, one point that I would like to bring up tonight was that um, I was very upset at the public hearing when I heard from a student who explained that she had already been told that German was cut. This board did not cut any foreign languages. And I don't want to see those cut. I would still like to see those continue to be offered so that students do have that choice. I am being told that there weren't enough students to register for those classes. However, we took out a requirement in the contract requiring minimum class sizes. So the fact that we have students who have been taking those languages, the fact that when we have spoken in the past about cutting a language. We went through a, a, a process of ending that so that students who were in their third year of a language were able to finish a fourth year. We sit here talking about striving for excellence, every student, every day, and we have actually just cut the cut the legs out from some of our students who are in their third year of a foreign language because now, if they're not able to complete four years, they won't be able to apply to some of the higher, uh, higher level colleges, Ivy League and high performing schools. Now, I know that in this district, we are encouraging our students to apply to colleges. Mm -hmm. We just heard a group. By not planning for any type of a, uh, a de-acceleration de of the programs. We did that without any plan for how to help those students because we've done that in the past. And I'm, I'm very upset about that and I would like to know how we're going to take care of that mm -hmm. because we were in budget discussions. We were talking about cutting positions to save money. We didn't save any money by telling students that they can't take those classes. There was no staffing change at all involved in that. We also cut a language at the middle school. We already know the results of that. That is going to cut languages at the high school because it happened before. And in that instance, that is when we began working to allow two levels of a language to meet at the same class time. Combination class. Right. This is all scheduling issues. And I truly regret the fact that we just seriously injured students who are working hard to be able to take the classes needed for admission to college. And we have left them with nothing. If they're in their junior year, 
and they're going into senior year, they can't start with another language because those schools require four years of the same language. Mm -hmm. So. You, go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Meek. Thank you for the chair to uh, committee. And I do agree with you, Ms. Dunn. We do need to look at uh, reinstating those. But you know, uh, under, the, under what we went through with the $6 million deficit there, um, that's a lot of money and, and, the, and, and the cuts were going to be painful. And I, and I do think we did, as a committee, did a great job of, of keeping the, uh, the pain to a, to a minimum. Um, it, it could have been far worse. And I'm not making any excuses, but we all know it could have been far worse. And I do think, and, and, and Ms. Carpenter says this all the time, that you know the budget is fluid, and I totally ag agree with her. And hopefully, through retirement or through some other means, we do um, find some money to reinstate some of those programs or, or, or some of those teachers down the road. Um, but in, uh, you know, in a six million six million dollar deficit, you know, it's going to be painful. And 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 I, and I I do agree with you, but it could have been a, a lot far worse than it was, and you know, I, I think it's bigger than us. I, I, again, I, I mentioned that funding formula earlier, and it's, it has to change. We, we, we can't do this every year, mm -hmm. and unless that funding formula is changed and addressed at a higher level, we will be doing this next year, middle of June, we'll be doing this again, and again the next year, and again, because this, this has been going on for 25 years, and um, they need to put us in a position to succeed so we can put students and teachers in a position to succeed. And we will, we are definitely still looking at things, Mrs. Dunn, I'm looking at virtual high school. We looked at Edgenuity, but they only do um, one and two. Uh, but I want more, the more advanced virtual high school does that, so we're talking, we're in conversation with them right now. And we also have to s speak to the students again to see of, of their interest. So we're still there. And I will bring you back a report on June 25th and then the follow-up um, school committee meetings in the fall. Okay. Oh, no, we're going to talk about this all the way through the summer. Well, Thank it, you. it can go. We, we will. We will. We will. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right. We're going, to move on. we're going to move on to public participation. If there's anyone here who would like to speak, the microphone is open. All right. We will continue with the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Arnotis. Um, so... Something that came to my attention, um, and I've been getting uh, phone calls about this, um, and so I, I put together a, a small committee, um, and we put our heads together, and the leadership team as well, and we are going to um, have a summer parent student information center. So it's going to be right here at the Higgins, right in the front when you walk in. It's the first room. We're going to have stations set up so a parent and students or um, legal guardians can come if they have to register a student, if they have to get a bus pass, if they have to get a, um, talk to food service, if they have to speak to put insurance on their Chromebook. It's going to be one-stop shopping right here at the Higgins. There's going to be hours. Um, I'm having the start team work with me here at the Higgins to make posters um, so, th so that parents can make uh, one stop and do everything that they need to do instead of going to central office to register or the school to register and then to the transportation department and then to up to the high school for food service. So it's going to be in one area. It's going to be here and um, we're very excited about it, and hopefully um, we will help families um, get it, uh, everything that they need for the start of the 2019-2020 school year. Um, Mr. Oh, so, sorry, Mr. Thank you, Ms. Bertag. This is fantastic. Um, a lot of other districts do this, uh, student information centers or parent information mm -hmm. centers, especially with our changing population. It's uh, Will we be having some um, translators here as well, just in case? Or? Yes. A couple of things. We're going to have um, translation here. And we are also, we wrote a grant for the J.B. Thomas. And I'm also going to be able to have a um, nurse here to look at immunizations if need be and tell the parents what they need. Um, so um, that was, we just received that the other day. So we're excited about that. So we really want to make it convenient and efficient for parents. Um, so it was, it's, we would like it to start July 1, and the 4th and 5th of July, it will not be open. But July 1, and it will go all the way till August 16th, because that's when the um, clerks are back in their home schools um, for the start of the school year. So it will be um, open Monday, 
in Tuesdays from 12 to 3, and then on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 7 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. It will be stationed with all the people here. Ms. Scott. Through the chair, Ms. Marchette, that's a great idea. They're having everybody in one spot, lots of questions happening. Um, can you put that like on the website? Can we send something out or yeah? I wanted to bring it here first to see okay. if everybody was okay with it first. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to, IT's involved in this as well, so it's going to be on the website. I have the start team. They're super excited to make the signs for every school and central office. They'll be, uh, and I would like to send something home uh, in the elementary report cards and um, send something out for six through 12 through Aspen in constant contact. So. Do we need a motion for this? I would, I would like one. I'd like to follow the recommendation of the superintendent to have a summer parent student information center here at the Higgins starting in July. Second. All right. Roll call vote. Yes. 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 Great, thank you. Um, the next thing I want to bring forth to you, um, and uh, this um, is that the Higgins Middle School uh, went through a very, very thorough process um, to look for a, a math program. They have used big ideas for the last six years, and uh, their contract was up. So we're using this as a, uh, we're doing this as a capital improvement and they uh, narrowed it down looked at companies and narrowed it down to Pearson in big ideas and it was a very very thorough process the whole entire department was involved in the process um, and it was run, run by Krista Shea who is the facilitator of math here and Debbie Giganti who is the associate principal along with Mr. Busey the principal and um, so they have chosen big ideas and they would like to um, again and what big ideas they they have this they wrote me up a little notice tonight but they would like to come in the fall to share um, more information on it but they have this thing called the skills trainer and and what it allows students to do and they can do it from home um, is basic math content that they can continue to review um, they also have um, many many differentiated lessons that is very very helpful um, the online access is excellent, um, and they're very impressed with that, and it has been upgraded immensely. Um, all resources are, are available in PDF form, including the textbook, and they love that. The ability to share assignments among staff um, for collaboration, um, is a, uh, um, they love that as well. The ability to alter online assessments is a capability of the, um, Math Big Ideas. And it uh, includes multiple supports as well um, for in, uh, ELL <coughs> learners. Um, and they have a multilingual um, glossary of vocabulary that they were very impressed with, and that was something new. Um, and it aligns beautifully to the math standards. So um, they, they voted as a team, and um, Big Ideas was the recommendation to bring to, uh, to you as the board, and it is a capital expense that we got approved through capital. Um, but I do need, um, I'm recommending this to you, so I do need a vote. Okay. Mr. Make a motion to follow the recommendation of the superintendent with the Big Ideas math program here at the Higgins. Second. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Coppender on the motion. Thank you. Um, through the chair, Ms. Murtag. Is this aligned with our um, elementary? They, they use, um, oh my goodness, I just had a brain cramp. I can't remember the name of it either. <laughs> no, uh, Math and Focus. <laughs> this <laughs> came to me, oh my goodness, that's scary. <laughs> math, wow, Math and Focus. And I use it right now with my elementary. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, really it came to me quickly. <laughs> no, Math and Focus, and they align the standards because we have created all of our curriculum maps to align so with the resource. So it's aligned, um, even though th they use math and focus, it still aligns nicely um, in the transition to um, big ideas. And then it aligns nicely to Pearson, because we also looked at that too, because the high school uses Pearson. So um, they all will connect? Connect with the we've vertical. we've had that problem the, before. Correct, with the, with the vertical and horizontal yeah. alignment. And we're making sure, and you will be getting a presentation from Dr. Lord and many teachers about our curriculum maps. They have been working on it so diligently, and you will have access to those soon by the end of the year. So you'll see that vertical and horizontal alignment. 
So the, the big ideas math that you need um, approval for, this involves um, textbooks, online? Yes. Um, so it's a six-year um, contract, and it would include all of the online access for grades six through eight and algebra, because we offer algebra here at the uh, Higgins. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what we have decided to do, because everything is online, but we do have some teachers and some students that still like the book and they like to take it home and what have you, they're doing class sets. Um, that's what they would prefer, but everybody would have an online code access and they can access it from in school and at home. So the class set is, it's in the classroom. Correct. And you take it if you want to, but other than that, it just stays there. Correct. Would we be getting any, like, um, presentation? Uh, like, is everybody coming? Can we look at everything? Or Sure. Absolutely. They would like to do that. They couldn't come tonight. Okay. But yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll move forward with the roll call. I think Ms. No. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Just one. Thank you. Okay. So this is a continuation of the current program that we already have? Okay. Yes, with many, many upgrades as I just went through. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, uh, much more um, in-depth. And uh, like, for instance, that multilingual glossary mm -hmm. will be a wonderful resource mm -hmm. for our L's. That's just one example. And then, and then the, um, the lessons, the differentiated lessons. And then I love the part that if a teacher does a lesson that is like they feel ex like solid with and they want to share with their colleague, they're shareable and they can send it in, uh, right in their, their, math, um, their big ideas folder, Good. which is great. Now, will, will the purchase be done this summer so that the students will start it in the fall? Yes. Oh, good, okay. Uh, that's what we would like right away. Um, what we would like, and um, I've been working with the vendor, I've been working with big ideas. I, I said I can't do anything until I get approval, but what we would like to do is, is m make sure the teachers have it before they go home, the online access. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to do that if it's approved. We're going to try to do that for teachers um, before, the, before they go home for the summer. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Miko. Thank you. Through the chair to Ms. Mertag, how many teachers were involved in the decision-making process? Eighteen. Eighteen. So thank you for doing that and giving your teachers the ability to, um, to see it and to own it and um, want to do it. So I applaud you on that. Thank it was you. A lots of discussion. It was, it was close, but lots of discussion. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Mrs. Cavender? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Okay, the next thing on our list is um, we have done the early retirement incentive program for unit A, the teacher unit, but tonight um, I would like to, um, in working with the mayor and unit B, uh, unit B uh, would like um, the board to take a look at their early retirement incentive program too. It is the same as unit A, the eligibility. Motion received. We will need a we will need a vote on this. Second. Thank you. Okay. That was all in favor on motion to receive. <coughs> Did they take a call? Do we have a is that a formal motion? Motion, second by Ms. Scott. Okay. Any discussion? So this was just a motion to receive. Motion to receive. Oh, okay. So that we're now all Now you need, now, now now you need, need an actual motion. motion. Yes. yes. I thought that's what that was. Sorry. I just have a question. Yes, just Mr. Miko. Through the chair. Did you say this is the same as unit A's? Exact same. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that the um, school committee approve the early retirement incentive program for offering to uh, Unit B. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Second. Seconded by Mr. Olympio. <laughs> Any discussion? Okay. 
We'll do a roll call vote. Mrs. Carpenter? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. 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 Great, thank you. The next thing in your packet um, is the transportation information. And um, we clean this up a little bit. It has all the same information, um, but the fees um, that we agreed upon at our budget are in here. And we also put um, in this letter, with your approval, the Summer Parent Student Information Center. We explained it in this letter as well. <coughs> so they can come in and do payments there as well as get uh, sign up for their bus passes and everything like that. That's a great idea. Ms. Carpenter. Thank you. Um, we used to give a $25 discount if they paid by a certain date and that was an incentive to help. Um, it was through conversation with Ms. Bresnahan that it benefited her to get all of these forms in quicker so that she could complete the routes. I think we did it by like July 1st or something. Um, we followed the uh, budget pattern. There was no significant decrease in the budget. It did help her at the time. And, and I'm pretty sure we even did it last year. Uh, am I wrong? Did we take it out? Yeah, we didn't do it last year. For point of information, we did not do it last year. I don't think we did either. Mm -hmm. um, but we have July 19th here because I'm late getting out of the gate. That's my fault. I thought maybe it wasn't on here because we're all a little late due to the way the budget fell. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if... I, I don't know if the new transportation director would have saw the benefit of that or had any input on it or if was she getting you know the late ones that kind of screwed up her roots and her schedule right I'm I that's something that I can definitely ask her um, but but I don't know if we should proceed like this this year and then we can make a real because last year I was just new coming on yeah I can work on this with Lisa um, and to see how yeah. many we get by July 19th and then if we have to do an incentive would we be will. for the following year. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to kind of keep a little bit of a track on that because I think Eileen did see a benefit in that because she said people would bring in these uh, you know, the day before school started. We get a lot mm -hmm. of that. And if that's something that you wish that I, I should do, I, I will talk to Lisa and, and move it forward. But um, the July 19th was the date we thought because it was like, Midway through the summer, yeah. we'll give it that push. And I, I don't think it'll work this year now because mm -hmm. usually we would get, have to get these out a lot earlier mm -hmm. and we would give that incentive for July 1st to, to turn them in and with a drop dead line date of, you know, whatever Lisa had, a, you know, wanted. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it'll work this year given the date now. I don't know. Okay. Sales come up all the time. Wait, Tom has a what we're Mr. doing Mr. right now is, is we're excuse me, setting this up on Family ID to take these online. I think we're going to see a more rapid uptake on these. So that's actually being set up as we speak. Maybe not this hour, but uh, this week. So these can all be done online? Mm -hmm. Correct. So maybe that will help? Hopefully. We're trying every little bit. We're trying for more efficiency. And it helps parents, too. You know, if they can do it from home or in one spot, we're trying to really help families. Uh, so. a, a lot of the struggles we had last year that I witnessed where people were waiting in line, it was very manual, it was, it was a struggle from all aspects. I think the vast majority of people will sign up for this online. They're already used to using this for, for athletic fees. They've moved the Chromebook insurance payment to Family ID, so it, it's a standard thing. They've already got a login for, for the vast majority of them. So we're, we're hoping that it'll, it'll go When did the athletic smoothly. fees go on there? A couple of uh, family ID, but a couple of years ago, I think. Yeah, a while ago. No, I still been waiting in line, paying by check at every no. sport. <laughs> family ID. Family night. Family Parent ID. Sport night. Fam family ID. That's it. Mr. Olympia. Yeah. So is that payment also online? So you can fill out the form and mm -hmm. make the payment online. That's what we're working on right okay. now to get it on family ID. Okay. Great. <laughs> Fall sports will be, you have to wait in line. I waited in line. Well, fall sports, you're going to have to, yes. Well, one, one of the problems we had last year was we could only take a check or a money order. We, we didn't want we to take cash. We can still do that. We can still do that. And we but. couldn't take the credit card, so we had folks waiting in line for two hours and with a debit card or a credit card and the extreme level of frustration when they got to the front. So this will allow them to, to use the card yeah. as well. Okay. Just what I need. Uh, you need a motion. 
Do we have a motion? Oh. I'd like to make a motion um, that the transportation information be sent to the student homes as well as to be put online and processed accordingly. So moved. Thank you. Get those out tomorrow. Awesome. Roll call. Yes. 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 Um, the next things on the agenda, we have a couple of wonderful donations. Uh, with your approval, a donation of $200 to CFCE for the Cerullo family, from the Cerullo family. Motion to receive with gratitude. All in favor? Um, Mr. Collins has given another $500 um, donation to the South School um, for Grief Sensitive Schools Initiative through the Grief Sensitive Schools Initiative grant. So with your approval. Motion to receive with gratitude. Second. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. The next on our agenda here is the Champion of Youth Awards. I put that in here from uh, the Peabody Healthy Eclair the Healthy Peabody Collaborative, <laughs> sorry, got that, um, the Champion for Youth Award. So congratulations to all the, all the award winners. I just think that's um, something that we should celebrate. Also in your packet, you have the monthly student attendance report. And as I said a, few, a little while earlier, that you, you can see that in eight out of our 10 schools, we have, uh, we have had um, an increase in attendance. So I, pl I applaud those schools. So a few more things that are not on here that I just want to bring up that we, I, I had spoken to the committee about we are in the midst of a co coordinated program review. And we are almost home. We are almost there. Um, the DESE is very pleased with us um, right now. Uh, but we do have a few more um, things that we have to do. And one is a survey um, on, on, on climate and, we, and how you feel in your schools and things like that. We thought this would be a wonderful time to get this done and, and wrapped up. Um, we would like to send this surveys home to families um, K-12 families and teachers um, in all the schools and students um, 6 through 12 would be able to um, take that survey. And so we can have that data. Um, we would like to do it all of next week and have that open. Um, and we'll have that data as we l finish our coordinated program review and wrap that up, but also have that as we're planning for our next school year. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, tonight. Ms. I think that's wonderful. I think it's a really good idea and I'm going to look forward to that data. Great. Thank you. And did I miss anything else? I just want to make sure. That was quite an agenda tonight, so thank you for listening to me and thank you for your approval on, on many, many things tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Smirtek. We will move on to subcommittee reports. Education subcommittee, I believe Mr. Hockman is right here, so we'll move over that. Finance subcommittee. Nothing to report. School and safety subcommittee. Uh, we met uh, prior to this meeting uh, today, and uh, nothing new, nothing to report. Thank you. Athletics and wellness. That's Mr. Hockman. All right, quality and standards, Mrs. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a, meeting, a, a meeting was scheduled for last week, but didn't, didn't uh, occur. So I would like to schedule a quality and standards subcommittee possibly, I, we do need to look at the calendar, possibly next Monday or Tuesday, uh, the 17th or 18th, to um, tend to the uh, attendance policy specifically and then just to go back over some of the other issues that, that we had pending before the subcommittee. So if, um, if you can check your schedules, if those two yeah. dates work, Great. If not, you know, w I know we really, I'll be very flexible because we've got so many meetings with budget, et cetera. I could do either of those. If we do them sometime after. It's sometime, it's sometime next week. Yeah. Monday or Tuesday, you said, Monday or Tuesday. Just pulling up the calendar. Let me look at my work schedule. Yeah, okay. just, just check and see if it'll work. Okay. And let Maji know and we'll yeah. Yeah. post it. Okay. Okay. Right. Great. We'll Thank you. That. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Liaison to parent and student advisory boards. Oh. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to have a parent advisory board meeting this month. And what I would like to do is to send out a note to the current and the incoming <coughs> parent advisory board members to just touch base with them, um, to speak with them. Maybe we can get together at some point 
uh, over the summer just for a social time, but also to ask if they would like to hear from the representative of the walking school bus. That was one of the speakers that was going to come in this year, and um, I'll try to make sure that that happens very early uh, next year, and perhaps some um, really good ideas will come from that meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Building and grounds, Mr. Amico. Thank you, through the chair of the committee. Um, as Ms. Dunn alluded to earlier, um, the fields out back were dedicated to firefighter James Rice, who, uh, who passed away in, on December 23rd, 2011. Um, it was, a, it was a beautiful event, uh, well attended by public officials, the community. We had some um, youth sports programs there, and um, it was just a, a, a great dedication to a great person, and um, just kudos to the whole city of Peabody for putting that on. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Mr. Amico. Uh, Special Education Parent Advisory Board. Um, nothing new to report, and again, as Ms. Dunn would say, uh, it, unfortunately, I would like to have met in the past few weeks, but with the budget meetings and we just had a lot going on, um, just couldn't fit it into the schedule. So look forward to picking it up in the fall. I can't believe I, I'm saying that, but. Uh. <laughs> Push away that summer, Mr. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And there's nothing new to report for the liaison to the City Council legislative delegation. Uh, new business, we will hold that unless anyone else wants to take it up. June 25th. Okay. June 25th. All items will be handled in the proper course of business. Thank you all for a great meeting. We have a motion to adjourn. Nine Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.